So hi everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Tyrielle Kolbesher. I am a technical service engineer at Bostic for engineering adhesives. Um, I'm originally from France, moved in the US near Milwaukee about five years ago. Um, started as market specialist at Bostic and I've been in um, technical service position for the past um, three years. So yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to present to you. So today I will be uh, presenting on reactive hot melt polyurethanes for demanding applications. So um, I will start today's presentation by giving you a quick presentation of who, um, who we are at Bostic. Um, then I will give you a um, quick overview on what reactive hot melt polyurethane technology are. Um, this is the last time I say hot melt polyurethane. I'm just going to say HMPUR from now on because it's much faster. <laughs> Um, then I will focus on some key performances that this technology can offer. And at the end of the presentation, I will show you some um, examples of applications. Sorry. So first, a little word about Bostic. Um, Bostic is part of the Arkema group. Um, we, so Arkema is divided into different business units, and we're basically the adhesive solution business unit of Arkema. We represent about a quarter of the group's sales. Um, we are the third uh, global adhesive manufacturer in the world with around 2 billion euros of sales worldwide. We're active in about 50 countries with technical centers. We have two in the US, one here um, actually in Farmington Hills, uh, one near Milwaukee. We have one in Europe, one in Asia. We also have production sites across all these uh, different countries and regions. We're about, um, we, about 6,000 6, employees at Bostic. So Bostic is divided in three, um, uh, four major business units, sorry. We have the construction and consumers, non-woven, advanced packaging, and durable goods, uh, which I'm part of. So durable goods is divided itself in different markets. We serve aerospace, automotive, assembly, um, engineering adhesives, building constructions. So our adhesives are in a lot of different applications from a car to footwear to apparel or appliances. Bostic has been expanding in the past few years through different acquisitions that enabled us to really widen our portfolio and better serve our customer needs. Uh, more recently, last year, we bought um, PMP, which is a um, Chinese company making hot melt polyurethane. Um, and last year, Edge and Ashland, which were two big acquisitions for us. So Bostic offers a wide a variety of different technologies. So I'm not going to go through all of them today because we could probably spend an hour on every single one of these. <laughs> so um, we're, we have different chemistries, polyurethane, polyester, polyamide, cyanoacrylates. Um, different types of adhesive, water-based, hot melts, uh, reactive chemistries, like curing, um, moisture curing. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in a little more, we're at booth 904, or you can just reach out to me after the presentation. Um, because today I'm going to be focusing on reactive hot melt polyurethane. So first, let's start with the basics. What, what is a hot melt? So a hot melt is an adhesive that is solid at room temperature. You need to apply heat to melt it, and then you can apply it on your substrate. It sets down by, um, it cools down pretty quickly, and then you have your adhesive assembly. Most common hot melts are polyolefin hot melts. A little more specialty is going to be copolyester, copolyamide, or a thermoplastic polyurethane. And up there, really more niche, we have reactive hot melts, which have really improved chemical and temperature resistance. So why is that? It's because they're like any other hot melts. You apply heat to melt them down, to apply them to your substrate. They cool down. But after the cooling down phase, they also react with the moisture in the air to crosslink. And that really creates a network that's chemical and environmental resistance. So I'm going to explain this a little more in the next slide. So a little bit of chemistry here. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not going to be too in-depth chemistry. It's going to stay pretty simple. Um, so how do they cure? Um, so in your hot melt polyurethane, you have an isocyanate. Uh, it starts by an, an isocyanate function, which is this. Um, this is the isocyanate function. So this is a pretty reactive chemical species. It's going to react with water. 
uh, then you're going to get an amine and release some CO2. Then this amine is going to react with another um, isocyanate function. And this is going to give your urea group. And when this happens on both sides of the polymer again, 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 that's your polyurethan, basically. So to give you an idea, because we have this question a lot, like how much water is needed uh, for our HMP or at Bostic, um, we needed a little less than seven grams of water to cure a full kilogram of PUR, and that releases about a little less than 1.2 liters of CO2. So that might sound like a bit much, uh, but I'll come back on this later. These adhesives are really meant for small applications, so you're never going to use a full kilogram for a part. It's really going to be less. So that was the chemistry part of it. Now, how does it really work? Like how, when you have your syringe, your hot melt, what do you do with it? So first, when you store it, since we saw that it reacts with moisture, you got to prevent it from, um, from being in contact with moisture. So usually, um, and that's our job, <laughs> usually they're uh, supplied in either an aluminum cartridge or a syringe, and the syringe will be in a vacuum sealed aluminum bag. Um, that it's necessary not to open before you want to use um, the adhesive so you don't contaminate it with moisture. So then you want to use your adhesive. So you start by applying heat. You want to choose the proper temperature because if you don't heat it enough, it's not going to be liquid enough that you're not going to be able to wet out your substrate well. So you're not going to get a good bond. But if you heat too much, you might degrade the material, or if you heat for too long, same, same consequence, you might degrade the material. So you really gotta be careful about the temperature that you choose and um, how long you're gonna heat that material for. Then comes the assembly. So you apply your adhesive on your first substrate, um, and then you wanna apply your second substrate quickly enough before the adhesive cools down too much, because if it cools down too much, um, you're not going to wet out your second substrate uh, fast, um, good enough. So that's what we call the open time, basically, is that time that you have to assemble your two substrates uh, once you applied it. Then we have um, setting time. So setting time is when, when the adhesive has cooled down. You have an initial strength. You can start like grabbing your part and moving it around. And then we have, if you wait a little bit more time, you have the dwell time. The end of the dwell time is where your adhesive has gained enough, it started moisture curing a little bit, and it gained enough strength that um, you can apply stress on that part. So for like fast beats processes, that's what you want to know. Like when can I move my part to the next step of the manufacturing, basically. Um, so all of these are going to depend, going to be influenced on room temperature, ambient uh, humidity, obviously, and airflow. Like if you're in winter in Wisconsin, it's cold, it's dry. <laughs> I don't know if here is the same, I assume so. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a little longer. And then, as I said, like you have this moisture curing mechanism that will really enable the hot melt to gain more strength than uh, classic hot melts. And that's also what I wanted to show you in the next slide, where for a classic hot melts, you heat it, it cools down, you have your final strength when it's cooled down. With these adhesives, it's going to cool down, so gain some strength and keep um, gaining strength due to the moisture occurring mechanism, mechanism, basically. So some of the benefits for these technologies, um, a high green strength, so what we call the green strength is the, this initial strength that the adhesive is going to gain pretty quickly. Um, something I haven't mentioned yet, but these are very flexible products, we'll see in the next slide. So really good for impact resistance, for example. Um, they're solvent-free, so 100% solids and no volatile organic compounds. They, um, they have fairly low application temperature, which is um, something you want if you start working with plastics or some substrates that can be temperature sensitive. Um, and as I said many times <laughs> now, by now, they're moisture occurring, so they have this cross-linking network that enables them to have good chemical and temperature resistance. So the data I'm going to show you in the next few slides are from uh, Bostic's HotMap PUR uh, products, um, which they were specifically designed for precise manual and dispensing, um, or automatic, manual or automatic dispensing, sorry. Um, so we'll go back on this a little later, but really precise dispensing, that's what they were designed for. 
So we have three main products, um, more to come with the recent acquisition, actually. Um, so as you see in terms of application temperature, we're between 100 and 140 degrees Celsius. So that's fairly low compared to other hot melts. So great for temperature sensitive substrates. Um, the allegation at break, as you can see, it's very high. We're above 1,000%. Um, so they're very flexible. You can uh, product really good for impact resistance. Um, 6002 is a pretty versatile product. It has good bonding strength on plastic, good environmental resistance, um, high initial bonding strength. Um, 6006 um, is a fluorescing product. So with a UV light, you can see where you apply the product, basically, because it's transparent otherwise. Um, and the 6009, which is um, it's a little less viscous than the other two, it's good for metal and glass bonding. Um, also excellent flexibility for this one too. So these are really general guidelines that I just gave you, but um, keep in mind when we recommend a product to a customer, we do a way more thorough investigation because it's not because I just told you that 6009 is good for metal that in some application we won't use it for plastics because it really depends on a lot of different parameters for your application. So the data that you see here is actually, so it's not, um, it's not lab shear or peel like you may be a little more familiar with. It's what we cross a cross, that's what we call a cross vertical pull test. So basically how we do this, it's gonna be hard to show with a microphone, but <laughs> you have a little picture here. So basically you bond your substrates in a cross like this and you're gonna pull vertically um, to break the sample and this is how you get the strength. So um, the chart on the left is uh, the bonding strength versus curing time on polycarbonate of the three products. So as you can see, they gain strength pretty quickly, first by cooling down. And you can see, for example, for the 6009 super, um, pretty clearly that um, you have the cool down period, and then you have the moisture curve that's starting. It's really starting to go up. Um, this is also another way to differentiate the three products um, here. If you need a, like a pretty high initial bonding strength, like you might want to do 6002, or if you, on the opposite, you don't want something that's too strong at the beginning, 6009 might be a better option. Um, the second chart here is the bonding strength at different temperatures. This just show like how uh, the temperature resistance of these products. Um, so here we went up to 100 degrees Celsius. You can see that these still retain like about two megapascal, which is still pretty strong. Um, and this will be different from like other classic hot melts where you're starting to get close to that application temperature. It might melt down again. These are thermosets, so they won't melt down. So you can actually go pretty high. Just to give you an idea of like um, the versatility of, this pro of these products, here's some data on uh, different materials. So these products can bond to glass, uh, where you can see here the 6009, for example, would be a good option here. Um, metal like steel here that we have, uh, but also some really common plastics in the electronics like polycarbonate or ABS. And the PA820 on this slide, this is actually a material from our mother company, Arkema. Uh, it's the Railson Clear G850R new. Uh, so it's a bio-based polyamide. And with these adhesives, we can also bond dissimilar substrates. So like here, the last one, it's poly, ah, the plant is hiding the. <laughs> so it's polyamide to steel. So really versatile products that you can use for a lot of uh, different parts. Um, we also did some environmental testing on these products. Um, so these aging tests are pretty specific to the electronics industry. Um, so in the blue bar here is the initial strength and the green is um, CBAM resistance. Then you have sweat resistance. These are two tests um, for phones or earbuds or wearable devices. Um, CBAM resistant is gonna mimic everything that's gonna go in your ear like hearing aids, headphones. Um, and sweat, obviously, is skin contact. Um, so these two tests, um, as they are conducted here, are like they're really aggressive tests for adhesives. So when you see that you still have um, more than two megapascal remaining after, this is really good because it's a really aggressive test, um, especially in the lab. Like we, we're really gonna exaggerate in the lab, real life situation, because you're not gonna have your headphone basically soaked in artificial sebum for a full week, and that's basically what we're doing in the lab, so really worst case scenario. 
Um, and in red, it's heat humidity. It's a little more common to um, other industries too, but with different parameters. So here we tested um, at 85 Celsius and 85% relative humidity uh, for about a week. And you can see that um, if I take the 6009, for example, we barely have any uh, strength loss. We have a little bit, but it's really not big. So in the electronics markets, uh, customers are going to ask for different certifications depending on what they're manufacturing or where they are. Um, these can be um, local uh, regulation. So for example, if you're talking with someone who's um, designing in the US, but maybe their manufacturing process will be in Europe or in China, they want to make sure that the product can be used in China or in Europe. So it might, be, it might have to be REACH compliant, it might have to be a Rojas China or uh, different uh, regulations. Um, these products can, are benzene free, halogen free. Um, for some applications, some customer will ask for, the, for some medical certifications. So that's what the ISO 10993 is, the dash 5 and dash 10 is for skin sensitivity, cytotoxicity. And so these products can have um, the certification depending on the product. And also they can be um, certified for flammability. So that's the UL V1 flammability rating. So as I mentioned earlier, um, in terms of packaging, these products can be supplied um, either in cartridge form, um, in syringes. If it's a syringe, it's gonna be supplied in a vacuum seal aluminum bag to protect it from humidity. Um, they can be dispensed manually with like air compressed dispenser or a gun if you're using the cartridge. But these can also be adapted to a robot so it can be automatically dispensed or it can be also, um, so these products are also great for dot jetting. If you're familiar with dot jetting, it's a really precise way to apply. It's a non-contact application and it's a really precise way to apply um, a product. Typical applications for these products um, include electronics, um, headphones, speakers, smartphones, um, display panels on automotive, wearable devices. I'm going to go a little more into detail for wearable devices. Um, so typically it can be used for that top circle on smartwatches, the glass on top, you can bond the screen, um, the battery, uh, any kind of little modules inside. Um, same for phones or smartphones, it can bond the speaker in the phone case. Um, they're also a really good product to uh, do case sealing, uh, to bond the case of like smartphones or, or headphones. So, um, some key takeaways of my presentation today. So first, I repeated it over and over again, so sorry for saying it again. <laughs> that moisture curing mechanism after cooling is really what makes the specificity of these products. They're gonna cross links, so they're gonna be really good chemical and temperature resistant product. They have a high initial strength, they're hot melt, they cool down pretty quickly, so that gives really an initial strength and that moisture curing starts afterwards, so if you wait a little more, you're really gonna get more strength. So they're really suitable for fast um, processing, fast manufacturing lines. They're solvent-free adhesives. So it's, they have really high flexibility, which gives them a really good impact resistance, which is great for electronics. Um, if you drop your phone or your headphones, these are great adhesives to really um, absorb the shock. Um, they bond to a wide variety of substrates from plastic, metal, glass, um, dissimilar substrates too. And they have really good environmental resistance thanks to this cross-linking network due to the moisture curing. So thank you very much. Thank you, Cyril, for your presentation about the reactive hot melt polyurethanes.